Hi, Grace and Jude. So this is set in action. Um, just getting ready for tea. We're now about, well, I always check my CGM about 30 minutes before, just in case I'm a bit high, but I am 5.2 and steady. So using the chart, that means I need to give my insulin 15 minutes before uh, my meal. It's going to be a balanced meal, which I'll check to show you in a minute. And it's going to be about 65 grams carbs. So for me, on a one unit for 20 ratio, that's going to be about three units of insulin. And the reason why it needs um, that 20 minutes head start is because of the lack of insulin in the portal vein um, for people with type 1 diabetes. So you need to give that insulin a head start and also a slow absorption. Here comes Jude. He's about to intervene. So I should give my three units of insulin now. You all right? Here we go. Are you ready for your tea? So, here we go, three units, in we go, so we'll see how that goes shortly. Here we are about to eat dinner, say hi Grace. Hi Grace. <laughs> so 60 grams, got 30 grams worth of potatoes, there's 30 grams of carbs, well 25 grams worth of carbs of veg. And then about five grams of carbs worth from hummus. So there's my 60 grams. You can see, be what you want to see. Grace, you've got the same. And Jude, you can just see you at the end. Jude, you're going to say hi? Jude, say hiya. Hiya. So we'll eat this food and we'll see how it goes. That's what a balanced meal looks like. Half plate of veg, quarter potatoes, quarter salmon. Lovely. So, tea's been finished. So you can see, mm -hmm. I've demolished mine. Grace, how you've done? Mm -hmm. Are you like eating most of your tea? Grace is eating most of hers. Well, probably if it was Grace, what we'd do is give half your linton up front, and then we'd only have to give probably a quarter of it afterwards. Jude, on the other hand, probably done about half of it. So we'd have done half the linton up front, and then we wouldn't have needed to do any more afterwards. So, meal done. Glucose is 4.8, so that's pretty decent. So given that insulin head start has worked, and then we're going out for 10 to 15 minutes in the garden now. So Grace and Jude, this is usually for us 10 to 15 minutes of activity after tea. Fortunately not to have a trampoline in the background. As you can see, you're pretending to uh, Grace there, put be nice and put the hat on him, but you're soon to be bouncing him all over the place. But the idea of this 10 to 15 minutes activity is insulin's much slower than food, even from a balanced meal. And this 10 to 15 minute activity is just going to get the blood flow into the muscles, get that insulin that you've given working quicker. Um, and yeah, hopefully stop any rise and get a na nice flat CGM profile after a balanced meal. But let's see. But yeah, as you can see, Grace, you're uh, giving Jude a torrid time, but I want to get stuck in for 10 minutes as well. Hey, what's going on? What's happening? <laughs> Now three hours on from tea and after doing the, obviously the insulin 15 minutes before eating, I'm going out doing the 10 to 15 minutes playing. So what does a CGM look like? You can see here now, tea was had well, way back at the start of this trace at sort of quarter past four. And now it's sort of 10 past four where when the insulin was given and it's now sort of three hours on, pretty much a flat line. And what you can see is early on here, sort of at six o'clock, it's round about where the activity was done, which kept it nice and low. Without that activity, I would have expected it to go up to eight, nine, 10, and then come back down. So it just allows that insulin to work um, much more effectively by putting in 10 to 15 minutes of activity afterwards. And you get a pretty, well, like a, a glucose profile of someone without diabetes. Obviously with that type of meal, it would only gone up to eight and nine and 10, um, at, the, at the highest, which is not the end of the world by any stretch of the imagination. Um, but it's good habits to get in that 10 to 15 minutes activity. And a way to think about it is, as an adult, it's bare minimum, you should be doing 30 minutes of activity um, in a day. So that's 10 minutes after each meal. And as a kid, minimum is 60 minutes a day. So 15 minutes after each meal, it should be the type of activity you're doing for good health anyway. So you might as well use it to maximize your diabetes control by sticking it after eating. Um, so that you can then, you know, gain the, the glucose benefits. 
Um, obviously, I've been practicing this, Grace and Jude, now for two years, three years. So I've worked at what works out for me perfectly. Absolutely, when I first started doing this, I would go low because I'd do too much activity or go high because I didn't do enough. It does take some trial and error to get spot on. And as I said before, that type of meal that we eat for the evening meal is sort of 80, 90% of the time. Of course, we enjoy things like takeaways and um, other meals, which are not quite as natural, well-balanced meals, but it's got to make up the staple of, you know, 80 to 90%. That's regardless of whether you've got diabetes, you just get extra brownie points if you've got diabetes because it makes the, the glucose level easier to control. So that's set in a nutshell. You make sure the insulin goes in before, you eat a balanced meal and you do 10 to 15 minutes activity afterwards. Simple.